Good morning, neighbors. Let's sing a song that my dad would sing while I was growing up. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to me when I was alone. You took me in your great family. You gave me new hope, said that I could live eternally. Now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. With all my heart and with all my soul, thank you for Calvary. And your riches untold Thank you for heaven fair And the place you prepared me there Now with all my heart I thank you Life is full of snares Trials seem so hard to bear It's then that I reach for That hand I know is always there And knowing he still cares I bow my head and say this little prayer Now with all my heart I thank you, Lord With all my heart And with all my soul Thank you for Calvary and your riches untold. Thank you for heaven fair and the place you prepared me there. Now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. read this quote from a man named Germany Kent or it could be a woman I don't know who it is I've never looked them up but I just thought the quote was good it's a funny thing about life once you begin to look at things you're grateful for you begin to lose sight of the things you lack I think we do live in a world that's constantly being advertised about you need this, you need this, you need this, you need more, you need more, better this, better that. And yet, this person could realize, you know, life is strange. The fact that if you can just go and think about what you're grateful for, the things that you have, instead of the things that you're lacking, uh, you will actually begin to lose sight of the things you lack. You will find peace and you'll find... You know, it's the same with relationships or people or anything. You can watch, look at things that, oh, they have the perfect relationship or they have the perfect children or they have the perfect th friends. They have all these things. And you're always looking at what you lack. You know, that, oh, I'm, I'm, what I have isn't good enough. And yet, if you look back, you're like, you know what? My kids are great. My relationships are great. You know, nothing's perfect in this world, obviously. And I think it's interesting in this song, uh, when you can just sit back and think, what am I thankful for? Lord, you've been so good to me. When I was alone, you brought me in your great family. You gave me new hope. You gave me something to hope in. And you also said I could live eternally. So now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. Why? Well, you know, but this life, you know, we begin so concerned about how 
no, no, but what about this? What about that? Life is full of snares, and trials do seem so hard to bear. But it's then that you realize there is a hand that's always there. And knowing that you still care, I can bow my head and say this little prayer, now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. You know, he's always there for us. Uh, he gave us Calvary. Uh, he's given a, us a promise of going to heaven someday and that he's prepared a place for me. And when you think about heaven, you know, you can actually put the same things to heaven. We know heaven is the perfect place. But then you can, well, will there be hot tubs? Yeah, you know, will there be vacations? Will I be able to do this? Will I be able to do that? And I've actually heard people say, well, I don't know. Heaven, you know, I, I won't even like it there because it won't have the things that I like. You know, and we are, the devil has got us so materialistic, maybe, uh, earthbound, carnal thinking. Uh, when we look at it, just the other night, my daughter was asking me about Esau and Jacob. And, you know, Esau, he had the birthright. But to him, it became as nothing because he'd rather sell it for a bowl of porridge to satisfy his carnal hunger for now. But then afterwards, you realize, you know what? What did I give up? But Jacob, he said he he wanted that. You know, he wanted things of the spiritual. It's the type of a carnal man versus spiritual. And you have to wonder, Lord, what are we lusting after? What are we desiring? Spiritual things or natural things? Or today, you know, we can go and serve the Lord together as a family. But then we said, no, no, my family lacks. We don't have good enough music. We don't have good enough preachers. We don't, I don't like this. I don't, so, I, so some people, they're just in an eternal search for something to satisfy a carnal thing. They're willing to sell out other things for the carnal joy. You know, well, if I can find a place. But like Charles Spurgeon said, if you're looking for the perfect church, you will, uh, when the one moment you join, it will cease to be perfect. You know, because we're not perfect people. And as sometimes there will be trials, but thankfully the Lord gave us a family to get through the trials together. I was actually speaking with a man, and he was talking about, you know, growing up in the olden days, you know, but he said, you know, there was threshing crews, you know, when you had to go to harvest your wheat or whatever. They would come all together and all work together. It was hard work, back-breaking work, you know, you're sweating. And the women would be over here making lunch so that when you took lunchtime you could all eat together and you all work together and he said you know, they just kind of went field to field to field together like that and lord help us you know <laughs> did these people all see perfection in each other no but they saw someone they could lean on and uh, help us to be like that let's be grateful so in second thessalonians chapter one it says paul Silvanus, and timothy to the church of the thessalonians and god our father and the lord jesus christ Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So when we read that last part, that doesn't sound like fun. This church is going through a persecution tribulation and they have to endure it you know i think just that word endure it they could run every direction let's get away from each other you know this is just too much you know god must not be in this because we're having too much problems it's not it's not fun <laughs> you know isn't church supposed to be this place you can just go and have fun and have miracles and all these wonderful things well that's be nice you know to the flesh but like in Jesus' time, here's Jesus in the midst of them. They still weren't happy. People are always never, they're not, they're not going to be happy because they want their will rather than God's. But we see in this church, you know, Paul and Sylvanus and Timothy said, you know, we are so thankful for you, brethren. You know, and it's talking about to the whole church, but as it is fitting, because your faith, in the midst of the, all this stuff, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So instead of letting the devil drive wedges and make them run away from each other, you know, and again, you can, they could have started blaming everyone. They could have started blaming, you know, you should be doing this more, you should be doing this more, you should serve more. Yeah. But that's where people make a mistake instead of looking within. It's like, Lord, what can I do better? Because I can do this to the fullest extent of my abilities. You know, let me wear myself out. If everybody else is going to be lazy, I'll do, I'll put in the extra work. But 
I don't believe this is how they were doing. They were all trying to help one another. And again, we are basic Paul saying, I'm, we're so proud of you. We're so thankful. And we're actually bragging about you to the other churches because I, they could see the other churches they were wanting to run from each other. But in here, in the midst of this persecution, tribulation that they are enduring, they're enduring it together. And they're willing to help one another to try to get through this. Uh, in verse 5, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. And, you know, they're really suffering. But help us, to Lord, to have, keep the right attitude and be thankful rather than uh, just complain. Complain about each other. Sometimes people will start complaining about each other. I'm going, they're like, I can't believe they're doing this. But then you realize... I know other people are doing this. You think they're the only one doing this, but they are not. There's a lot of people going through the same thing. Don't think that they're the only one. So, Lord, help us all, and let us draw closer to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.